Hello, welcome to this video where we look at improper integrals. Um, the previous video was just the concept behind it, what makes an integral improper. And now we're going to look at integrals that are improper because they have either infinity as an upper limit or minus infinity as a lower limit. And so first up is we have the fact that infinity could be an upper limit. The way you handle that is you don't plug in infinity like a number. What you do is you let a variable approach infinity and you re replace the upper limit with that variable. Integrate like normal, plug that variable in, and then you have to do a limit problem after that. All right, let's see an example. We have the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative 2x. So what's the area under the curve from 1 to infinity of this particular function, this exponentially decaying function e to the negative 2x? So according to what's above there, rip out the infinity, put in a t, and do the limit as t approaches infinity. What is integration? Is it going to be complicated? Right? It's going to be negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. So we replace the x with a t, we replace the x with the 1, and then we do a limit as t goes to infinity. But before we do that, we're going to find out that it's better to not have negative exponents. And so if there is a negative exponent, you're going to need to move that and put it in the denominator. You'll find you'll have an easier time knowing what's going on with um, in what, what's happening at infinity when, when it's in the denominator. And so rewrite this, put the e to the 2x on the bottom with the 2. Plug in the t, plug in the 1, and now do the limit as t goes to infinity. So we're talking about 2t, so that's, you know, infinitely large. e raised to an infinitely large number is exponentially large. So anyway, we have a negative 1 divided by twice an exponentially large number. What happens there as the number gets larger and larger? It's going to go to 0. And then we just have the other part. 1 over 2e squared is just a constant. This integral converges, right? We have a finite answer. Um, this is just a picture of the, the painting of the area there. So although the interval is infinite, the area is finite. We have to be able to wrap our head around that. All right, another example. Maybe the integration is going to be a little harder in this one. But still, 1 to infinity. So we bring in the limit as t goes to infinity and replace the infinity with the, with the t. How do you integrate this function, though? 1 plus e to the x is in the denominator, and e to the x is in the numerator. The derivative of the denominator is the numerator. So just do a u sub. Let u be the denominator, du is the numerator. It becomes 1 over u du, which is the natural log of u. Sorry, it's so small there. And so you get the natural log of 1 plus e to the x. Um, I've chosen to switch midstream from t to b. Hmm. Okay, why don't we just make it a b? Okay, <laughs> so um, b goes to infinity. So 1 plus e to the b inside of a log, and then 1 plus e to the 1 inside of a log. The limit as b goes to infinity. So, so b goes to infinity, e to some very large numbers, exponentially large, plus 1 doesn't really change it too much the natural log of an exponentially the natural log of a large number is large this constant minus the log of 1 plus e it doesn't affect it the fact that the first term is headed off to infinity when your integral when your limit is infinite or your limit doesn't exist you say that your integral is divergent here's the painting of the area there from 1 to infinity the big difference between the previous question and this question is that as we were um, headed off to infinity, we, the, uh, the area was getting infinitesimally small. Here, as we head off to infinity, there's no, there's no decreasing in this area. We don't have a chance to converge. That's the concept. That's the idea, basically. All right, let's do another one. How about the lower limit? Minus infinity. Um, T, A, whatever variable you want to use, replace the... Uh, lower limit with that variable okay and so our example uh, from the first set is a minus infinity to 1 um, the function is x e to the x 
rip out the minus infinity, put a letter in its place, a variable, and I, I chose A. I, I like I usually choose A for the lower limit and B for the upper limit, but somehow T gets in there sometimes too. Um, and so, yeah, how are you going to integrate X E to the X? You're going to use integration by parts. But you can even go further, use a shortcut to that, called the tabular method. When you have a polynomial times an exponential that you can, you know, exponential, um, exponential that you can take inf infinitely many antiderivatives of, or enough of them, you don't need infinitely many, you need to be able to have that polynomial differentiated down to zero, and then ex the, um, the exponential integrated the same amount of times, you multiply along diagonals going down to the right and applying, it does the uv minus vdu integral for you x e to the x minus e to the x. So we put a 1 in, and we get e minus e. And we put an a in. a e to the a minus e to the a. And so, and with the minus on it. So let's uh, distribute the minus, and let's factor out. So we'll have the e to the a gets factored out, and we'll be left with 1 minus a. Now, a is going to negative infinity. So, e to the a is going to be very small. 1 minus a, as a goes to negative infinity, is going to be very big. These two things are at war with each other. One wants to be small, while the other one wants to be big. This is an indeterminate form. 0 times something that's very large headed off to infinity is not necessarily 0. It could be, but not necessarily, though. This isn't L'Hopital ready, but with one step, we can make it L'Hopital ready. L'Hopital ready is zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So we need to create a fraction from a product. Instead of multiplying, we'll divide by the reciprocal. And so instead of multiplying by e to the a, we can divide by one over e to the a. Maybe I should have left it like that, one over e to the a. I called it e to the negative a, which is fine too. Um, and so, now, as a goes to negative infinity, we already know that the numerator is going to infinity. What about the denominator now? It's the opposite of something that's going to negative infinity. That's infinite, and e to that infinite is, is headed to infinity. This is now L'Hopital already. I debate whether or not I put an S in L'Hopital. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I hear I have it as an S in there. The execution of L'Hopital's rule is that you take the derivative of the numerator and you divide by the derivative of the denominator. And you do that limit instead, provided that it exists. Well, numerator derivative is negative 1. Denominator derivative is negative e to the negative a. So now we do it again. We let a go off to negative infinity. We have negative 1 in the numerator. And then we have a exponentially increasing function with the negative in front of it though but cut negative one into infinitely many pieces you'll have zero essentially and so this happens to end up as zero area under the curve let's take a look at the visual though you are integrating from minus infinity up to one the way the graph um, behaves the x values that are negative lead to negative area and then from zero to one that area balances it out, those two areas cancel, and you end up with zero. Okay. All right, great. What about if there's an infinite upper limit and an infinite lower limit? We have minus infinity to infinity. Well, here's what you do. You pick any number whatsoever, something simple would be nice, like zero or one and you break your integral into two integrals. You go from negative infinity up to that number, then you go from that number off to infinity. Okay. And then with those guys being improper, you replace them with a variable, and you let that variable approach either infinity or minus infinity. When we have uh, probability, which is coming up soon, most of the integrals are over the entire real line like this. So we have to know how to handle them. So here's our integral. x squared on top of 1 plus x to the sixth. Pick a number, any number in between, <laughs> any number whatsoever, and the uh, best number chooses 0. So we go negative infinity to 0, and then we go from 0 to infinity. 
but we replace the negative infinity and infinity with a and b respectively. Let a go off to negative infinity, let b go off to infinity. So we got the setup correct. If we do all this without a limit, then we'll technically get it wrong. Okay, and so um, how do you integrate the function? Let's talk about that. It would be nice if the denominator was a cube because then one plus x cubed's derivative is very similar to x squared dx. It won't be exactly that, it'll be a constant times that. And so what we do then is basically we treat x to the sixth as like x cubed squared. And so if you do that, then you go ahead and let u equal x cubed because its derivative is the numerator. And then you'll not have um, 1 plus uh, x to the sixth as your denominator. You'll have 1 plus u squared as your denominator. So you let u be equal to x cubed. du is 3x dx technically, 3x squared dx technically. So 1 third of du is going to take the place of that numerator, x squared dx. So you have 1 third of du. You have 1 over 1 plus u who is squared. But you know that antiderivative there is arctan. Sorry, it's written so small. So your antiderivative is one third the arctan of x cubed for both, where we go from negative infinity to zero, we go from zero to infinity, and we set it up where we go from a to zero, and then from zero to b, letting b go off to infinity, letting a go off to minus infinity. Okay, all right, great. We have to put a zero in and then put an A in. Put a B in and then put an A in. But the arctan of zero is zero. So putting in zero gives you zero. So in this next step, it looks like I just ignored the zero. I didn't. I use that fact that the arctan of zero is zero. Upper limit, you gotta be careful with the signs. Upper limit minus lower limit. So, so plug a zero in and you um, get zero, then minus the lower limit, you get minus one third arctan of a cubed. Then on the other one, uh, upper limit, you get the b, and then minus nothing. So this is what we get. a is going to negative infinity, and b is going to infinity. You have to remember the graph of arctan. I should have had it already pre-animated here, sorry. It has these asymptotes at minus pi over two, and at pi over two. And so, well, that's weird, okay. Um, and so the function asymptotically approaches pi over two as you approach uh, infinity and asymptotically approaches negative pi over two as you approach negative infinity. So this guy's gonna head to negative pi over two and then this guy's gonna head to pi over two but with the negative being there, basically you have pi over six plus another pi over six. So you have pi over three. Okay, all right, great. Um, wow, I didn't realize the video got so long. Sorry about that. Um, erase all ink on the slide. Here's the picture there. The way the graph grows and then it's, uh, it's symmetric with respect to the x, respect to the y axis. It's an even function. Um, and so we could have actually integrated from zero to infinity. All right. All right. That's the end of this video. We'll come back with the next video where we deal with discontinuities of the function. And then there's a couple more videos after that. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. I am here to help you through this journey. Um, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Um, please comment down below or like and subscribe. See you in the next video.